As a badge of honor, many people talk about their VO2 max and grip strength as a marker of health, but not many people refer to their CD4 to CD8 T cell ratio. And this is a really strong marker of a good immune system. Many people I speak to, they say it's extremely liberating when you know you have a good immune system. You go to the gym, for example, you don't have to sanitize every bit of equipment that you use. And so that's why today I'm talking about thymosin alpha-1. While it is no silver bullet for the immune system, it's arguably the closest thing. So first of all, I'll give you the lowdown on thymosin alpha-1. Then I'll go into dosing protocols and then talk about what I've noticed with my own immune system, breaking that down as well as in other people. So it's an isolated thymic peptide, 28 amino acids long. And it doesn't just boost the immune system. Obviously, it's known for that, uh, both the innate and adaptive immune system, but it also has immunomodulatory effects. So uh, it's often seen as like a toll-like receptor working downstream of the immune system. And it's even FDA approved under the brand name Zedaxin. And think of it like an immune calibrator rather than like, you know, just stimulating uh, like immune activation, inflammation. It's really, it's just helping with those T cells, um, the coordination of them. And I'll come back onto that when I'm explaining the, the breaking down the immune system. So it's got some good data on it, you know, for hepatitis B and C, just uh, chronic viral infections. You also got um, like post COVID recovery from that. There's also studies on it treating uh, chemotherapy related immune suppression. And uh, when, when you look at the, the data on it, when those hepatitis trials, the typical dose that's thrown around is 1.6 milligrams twice a week. And in those the COVID trials, they did it more intensively, like doing the 1.6 milligrams over seven days. Moving on to typical dosing that I've come across, uh, generally people do that two to three times a week with between 0.8 and 1.6 milligrams, somewhere in that kind of region for like four to eight weeks. Some people do it in tents, like I mentioned, similar to their COVID, post-COVID one. At say if you've been exposed to pathogens, maybe you've been traveling very run down, those kind of things, or just in the flu season in general, then some people do like a, an intensive one, five to 10 days doing that 1.6 milligrams. And doing an intense cycle, that's where you're most vulnerable to side effects, most common ones being headache, fatigue. Some people get a little bit of flushing as well and other people they do they, they they do notice that it does improve like you know like the the immune system in terms of like if someone gets frequent colds they generally do notice that uh, they become less frequent soreness around the injection site is fairly common but most people no start to notice those benefits of it depending how intensive of a cycle it is but yeah if you're doing a moderate one then after kind of like week three, week four, you generally start to notice that immune resilience coming through. Before I jump into my cycle of thymus and alpha one, let's just break down the immune system and what I've seen in myself and other people. So when you look at your innate immune system that's comprised of macrophages, neutrophils, monocytes, and these act very, very quickly, but they're not smart, they don't learn. And then you've got your adaptive immune system, so T cells and B cells. And so they are smart and they do learn. And then within that, so you've got T cells, like you've got uh, CD4 cells, and they're like um, helper cells, basically. They coordinate your immune system. They can tell uh, B cells to make antibodies or get uh, your CD, for, uh, sorry cd8 cells to uh to assassinate like a you know either a virus infected cell or a senescent or cancerous cell so when you've got a really healthy thymus gland then generally you'll have a lot of naive cd4 cells so they're like fresh immune cells ready to help and uh, when, when uh, you do need CD8 cells as well, but when you've got an imbalance of them, what that represents is immuno exhaustion or you know, immuno senescence as well, just driving chronic inflammation. And it just steadily happens with age. And so that leads me on to my CD4 to CD8 T cell ratio. 
it has been really, really good in the past. Like, right, you want to have it bang in the middle 50th percentile. It used to be in ratios between a one and four ratio. So you wanted to have it around 1.5, uh, 1.75 is like bang on. That's like pretty much 50th percentile. And now, so mine used to be in that kind of range. And then over this year, it's been dropping off. So back in July, it was 28.7 percentile. So going the wrong direction, whereas my neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio, that represents like, um, say, a lot of uh, physiological stress or even emotional stress that can really exhaust your immune system. And the pattern is with that one, again, you want to have that in the 50th percentile. And I can see back in July, it was starting to go in the wrong direction, the 73rd percentile. And then come to the 10th of uh, November, so about uh, three and a half months later, I've got my CD4 to CD8 T cell ratio. This is my, probably the most important thing you can follow for your immune system. And for me, it's gone even worse, really, really bad, 1.3 percentile. Whereas when you look at my neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio, that's now at the 92nd percentile. So what that shows to me is that I've got it's a lot of uh, immunosenescence, just my thymus gland isn't working efficiently anymore and a lot of physiological stress because I'm not actually getting exposed to a lot of um, viruses at the moment. Fortunately for me, because especially it's flu season here in the UK, but because I work from home, I don't get exposed to things, you know, like on a rush hour train, for example. But so I am very vulnerable to getting ill. And that's why by doing this testing, I know. And so that's why I'm doing a cycle of thymus and alpha one. Check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different biomarkers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change. As you get older, this CD4 to CD8 T cell ratio becomes more relevant for mortality of much higher risk of infections. And I have seen it the other way around, you know, uh, where it's very high on the scale. So that's not a good thing either. So that can be a sign of uh, autoimmunity. But generally with age, the naive CD4 cells, they're the ones that decline the steepest. And it's known as uh, thymic involution. And it happens from the age of four onwards. And in my case, that is the worst out of all of them. When you look at the those immune subsets, it's like at 3.2 percentile. It's very, very low. Even my memory is low. And then when you look at the CD8 cells, they look one of you know the the memory one is balanced, but the even the, the naive CD8 cells. Remember, they're like the assassins that come in and nuke those um, virus ridden cells and that that is still on the low side it looks like it maybe it could be a little bit of immunosenescence but i don't think much because yes uh, I, I do do a lot of things for uh, as like a senolytic protocol uh, i should do them more often really but even just doing rapamycin at the it's known as immunosuppressant but when you do pulses of it weekly i've seen it where it actually helps generally as it kills off those senescent immune cells. But to reiterate, the main driving factor, I believe, is just exercise-driven physiological stress. Because I've not uh, had any like, reported sickness, I haven't actually had a day off sick since uh, May 2024. So mine is just more exercise-driven. And although I'm not an athlete, I have spoken to people who are very very athletic and you do see this where it does um you know drive up neutrophils deplete you of lymphocytes and yet for me although i'm i'm not i would say i wouldn't classify myself definitely i'm not an athlete but i do train monday to friday and i do try and set personal bests very very frequently outside of that i do supplement the basics you know like zinc vitamin d you know zinc is just essential for t-cell production and this is where something like thymus and alpha one can come in because it has immune modulatory properties it can just balance things out and i have seen this you know people in their like mid 50s mid 60s as well where they've got really well balanced cd4 to cd8 t-cell ratios and they've been using thymus and alpha one Myself, I've been relying on thymolin. I've done quite a few cycles of it over the last few years. I have done thymus and alpha one, but this is about three years ago now, around that like winter Christmas period. But yeah, in the last two, three years, I've just been relying on thymolin, but I haven't done a cycle since February. 
And so that's where I'm seeing this gradual decline in my immune system. Moving on to my cycle of thymus and alpha one. So I'm doing somewhere in that moderate range, like 1.25 milligrams twice a week. And this is for six weeks. It's, uh, it works out nice because you know you get four shots out of every five milligram vial and it's not too expensive either. I've, I've got mine from Peptizer London and so with a 15% discount, they sometimes have like really good offers, but then that would work out to around 75 pounds for that six week cycle. And for me, that's just keeping me covered over the winter period and then I'm testing my uh, like full epigenetics, true health, true age, on the 15th sorry on the 16th of February and so that gives me about a month like clear just to let my immune system normalize and see what's what with it but yeah think of thymus and alpha one as short-term immune correction improving that coordination and then thymolin that is more thymus regeneration so just as a preventative thing and so because I test every quarter so in between for my next cycle after February in between there at some point I'll likely do a cycle of thymolin for that reason and then just because I've identified this is a weak area for me and I can vouch that it, these two do really work you know, I've seen it with uh, thymus and alpha one with someone with autoimmunity, um, alopecia universalis, and their hair start regrowing. They're doing an intense course of thymus and alpha one, followed by thymolin, doing uh, pulses of that just to help as well, and just seeing like a little bit of like you know the regrowth coming through on that. Yeah, again with thymolin, I've seen that where it just really helps with that naive T cell production, naive uh, CD4 cells. And that's what it's all about. It's not just improving your numbers on a sheet of paper. It's about real world examples where you know you can actually see it happening. You know, just people not getting sick. That's a real good indication. But yeah, seeing those numbers as on the screen does help because then it also prevents it in the first place. If you can start to see something happening, then you can work on it. And that's why I'm a big fan of epigenetics because it's a long-term trend, not a short snapshot. You can just see ahead of time and just plan ahead. And I can attest it truly is life-changing when you do have a balanced immune system. As mentioned, May last year was the last time I got sick. My sleep scores had been uh, low those last two months leading up into May. And then I, that's when I really started improving things. And then uh, before that, the last time I was ill in 2022, I had COVID, but I actually worked through it. I was okay. So it was actually 2021 was the November 2021 was when I was last actually ill. On top of that, I've managed to suppress my herpes outbreaks over the years. So let's hope it stays like that by me keeping my finger on the pulse with those immune cells. So if you like that video, then check out this one on my top five anti-aging drugs. Not only has it got thymolin I mentioned earlier, rapamycin, but also another interesting one for immune regulation, which is epitalon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.